Okay. <laughs> um, like I said, we're going to be talking about UI table views today. Um, but first, we're going to start with a review of last lecture where we talked about delegation and modal presentation. Um, so here's the first question. How do we push and present a view controller? Give you guys a couple minutes to read the options. Yeah. B? Uh, yeah, you're correct. So the answer is B. Um, can anyone kind of explain the difference between pushing versus presenting? You can keep going. So pushing uses the navigation control to push a new control onto the stack. Presenting is just globally showing new control. Yeah. So does everyone remember the difference between how that looks on the screen? Okay. Um, so next question is about delegation. So why do we use delegation? <laughs> Does anyone else want to answer? Go ahead. C. Yep. So we use delegation to pass information between view controllers and or views. So what we use this for in the last demo or what you guys should have used this for in your projects that you should have submitted um, was to kind of save the text that we inputted on one screen and update it on another screen. Cool. So moving on to the topic for today, which is UI table views. Um, first, we're going to start off with what is a table view? So a table view is used when you want to present a scrollable list of items on your screen. So you can think of it like a very generic like table like you would make in like a Word document, except this is like your screen and you can scroll on it so you can see multiple items if you scroll up or down. And then some examples of UI table views that you've probably seen before in different apps that you've used. Um, the settings screen is um, a UI table view with multiple sections in it. And then in like a music player app like Spotify, oftentimes the like playlists or the songs that show up are also in a table view. So you can break a table view down into different components as well. So each table view is made up of sections, and then each section can be broken down into different rows. And then each row has a corresponding UI table view cell, which is the view that you display for that row in the table. Um, to kind of demonstrate what this looks like with the setting screen. Um, at the top we have one section and then you can see there's a large gap between that thicker bar and the bar that starts with airplane mode. So that signifies that there's different sections in this table. And then once again there's another section that starts with notifications over there. And then if we broke this down even further, um, each section is comprised of different rows. And you can see that the rows don't have to be the same size as four different sections. Um, and you can set this using different methods that um, Apple provides in the UI table view um, functions. Um, does anyone have any questions about the components of a UI table view? Cool. So how do we add a UI table view to a view controller? So you can create a UI table view just like adding any other UI component to your view controller. So just like you guys would create a UI button or a UI label, you can just store your result in a variable. So in this case, in this example, we just stored it in a variable called table view. And then we just use the constructor for a UI table view. Um, and the constructor we use in this example is frame, but we you don't really have to use frames and you can just use an empty constructor, so nothing inside the parentheses if you're going to add constraints to it like we are teaching you guys. And then obviously you always want to set translates auto resizing mask into constraints to false. And then there's some more setup code that we're going to discuss in the next couple of slides. And then you always want to remember to add it to your sub view so that it'll show up and then add constraints after you add your view to your sub view. Does everyone understand what the code is doing on the slides? So in order to implement table views, there are two protocols that your view controller class needs to conform to. So keep in mind that okay. Sorry. Um, keep in mind that your UI table view is a component that you're placing on your view controller. So just like you put a button on a view controller, you're putting a table view onto your view controller. It's not that your entire view controller is a table view, but you can, you can make it look like that by constraining your table view to be like the entire screen. Um, so once you place your table view inside your view controller, there's two protocols that this view controller has to conform to. 
Um, and these are called UI Table View Data Source and UI Table View Delegate. So this first one, that's the data source, is a class, and a class that conforms to this protocol implements functions that provide um, information that the table view needs to construct itself. So like the key components for this one are the number of rows that there should be in a section. So if we think back to the settings screen, the first section on the top had one row, um, the second section had a couple more, and then the next section also had more than just one. And then this protocol will also tell you what table view cell to display at each row. So in that example for settings, depending on um, like the row or the section, you could choose to put a different kind of cell there using this method. And then you can also tell the table view how many sections it should have. Um, this one is optional, but by default this is one. So if you wanted to do something like the setting screen, you would have to override this and provide um, more than one. So if we were just looking at the screenshot that we showed earlier, that was just three sections without having to scroll and see more sections. So the method names for these are pretty um, understandable, um, they make sense. So number of rows and section is the one that you would use to provide the number of rows and section. Cell for row at is the one that tells you what object to display at each row and number of sections determines the number of sections in the table view. And then the way that you would do this is similar to how we were using delegates, but you would just do table view dot data source equals self inside your view controller. And this is basically say, the data source for my table view is myself, the view controller. Does that make sense? And then the second protocol that your view controller has to conform to is called UI table view delegate. And our view controller that conforms to this protocol has to implement functions that provide information about the height of each row and how to respond to selections on a cell. Um, so these are the primary ones that we normally implement. There's also a couple more if you read the documentation. But for the purposes of creating like a basic app and for the demo of the project, these are the only ones that you have to worry about. Um, so the first one is the height for each row. So like we saw in the settings, the top bar was much thicker than the other bars. Um, this one's actually optional, but you should implement it if you want your table view to look a certain way, because otherwise it can get really weird if you just use the default values. And then you also have to, or you don't have to, but you can optionally um, tell your table view what should happen if a cell is selected or deselected. So this is kind of similar to the touches began method that was in your project threes. Um, and basically any time a cell is selected, there's a function that will be called when it's selected, or if it's deselected, there's also a function to handle deselections. And then similarly to how we had to set the data source to be ourself, you have to set the delegate to be yourself once you conform to this protocol, and then implement um, these functions here. And then in Swift, if you just do, um, you just use the notation to conform to a protocol, which is the colon and then the name of the protocol, um, like we used for delegates last time. Um, it'll probably tell you, oh, you don't implement these methods, but you have to, and then you can just click add protocol stubs, and then it'll um, put the method headers there for you so you guys can just fill that out, and you don't actually have to memorize the name of all of these functions that you have to implement. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. And then in order to determine what kind of cell you have in your table view, um, you can use a couple of the default cell styles, but if you want to create custom UI table views, um, so on the bottom I have some pictures of the ones that we use across some apps in app dev. Um, so these are not default cell styles that Apple provides and are actually views that we've um, constrained ourselves. So if you want to use a custom UI table view cell that you've designed and customized, you have to register your cell in your table view. And you do this with this line of code here, which is tableview.register. Um, we'll go over these functions in the demo, so it'll make a little more sense. But once again, table view is the name of a variable that I've used to create my ta UI table view. And then the second argument in this function is something called for cell reuse identifier, and it's a string. So what exactly is a reuse identifier? Um, if we think about implementing some sort of playlist. Um, if your playlist had 2,000 songs, you would need 2,000 cells 
to display all of that information. But this takes up a lot of memory. It also will slow down your application. And this is bad because none of that is good. Um, so instead, we actually only create the number of cells that can be seen on the screen at one time. So let's say, I don't know the exact number in this screenshot, but let's say only five songs showed up on the screen at once. We'd only create five cells instead of all 2,000 cells. And then once a cell goes off the screen by scrolling, you can reuse that cell to display the new cell that comes up on the bottom of the screen after scrolling up. And the reuse identifier is what helps identify a type of cell. So in the next slide, we'll um, look at another thing that kind of makes this a little more clear. But this basically is um, like this cell is of type um, song cells. So that way, when I want to reuse a cell, I can pick one that has this specific identifier so that I can reuse one that's already kind of laid out for what I want to do. So in order to reuse cells, we use something called dequeuing, and it allows us to get an instance of a reuse cell that has gone off the screen. And we do this by doing reusable cell, and then the argument for this is with identifier. And this is where you pass in the reuse identifier that you've set for your cell so that you can reuse something that's already gone off the screen or is no longer being displayed. Um, and then this helps with the memory issues and the slowness if you didn't actually dequeue cells. Um, does anyone have any questions about this whole process or why we do it? Yeah. So, so the identifier will uniquely represent an actual specific cell? It's not an actual specific cell, but kind of like a type of cell. So, Let's say in the songs um, playlist, it's not just one specific cell, but all of those would have the same reuse identifier that you registered um, in the beginning when you did um, when you did table view dot register. Um, if you pass in that reuse identifier and they're all the same, then any cell that's gone off the screen could be reused again. Does anyone else have more questions? Cool. So just to reiterate the basic steps of creating a UI table view, first you have to initialize and lay out your UI table view. So that's what you do inside your view controller where you do equals UI table view. Then you, if you're using custom cells, you should create your custom UI table view cell. Um, and this is another class that you can subclass. Um, and then you have to register this custom table view cell to your table view with table view dot register and you provide the reuse identifier. And then you can form your UI view controller to the two protocols that we talked about, and then implement the functions that are required, and probably some of the ones that are optional to get the behavior that you want. Anyone have any questions? Cool. So this is just a screenshot of what the demo for today is going to look like. But basically, you can see we have a very generic table view that has um, cafeterias or dining halls um, as the cells. Okay, so yeah. So the starter code for this demo will be under the resources tab on Piazza. So if you guys want to open that up. I'll give you guys like a minute to open up the code. Everyone ready to go? Okay, so um, as you can see, we have initialized the app as you normally would, so you guys don't have to worry about that. And then we have this view controller here with some constraints which are commented out and then some further comments down here. So if we go back to this completed demo here, you can see I can click on these cells 
and then these hearts pop up, right? And if I click on the heart, it'll go away. So we have a list of cafeterias here, and like I was saying in a previous lecture, we like to think of our models to represent our data. So let's actually create a model to represent a cafeteria. So let's create a new file, and we will call this cafeteria.swift. Regular Swift file. Okay. So we're going to create a class. And a cafeteria, in our case, will have a name, which is a string. We're going to keep track of whether or not it's our favorite cafeteria. And then let's actually create an enum called cafeteria rating. So this is going to have a terrible case, bad moderate, good, and great. So that's just an enum we're going to use. And let's actually add another property to this class called rating. Cool. OK, now we get an error. You can see it says we have no initializer, so let's provide one. So now we have an initializer for our cafeteria. And later on, we want to, if we go back to the simulator, you see we have this string that says rating, and then with the capital letter, the rating, our, our enum of our cafeteria, right? So let's actually create this little helper function called get rating string. So let's switch on the rating of our cafeteria. Let's go through each case. Moderate. Okay. Bad. Okay. So we can use this later on to actually show the rating of our cafeteria. Okay, and because it's a function, we have to specify the return type, which is a string. Cool. Okay, so. Just wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, yeah, it's going to. The error will go away. I think they're still copying. Do you guys still need to see this? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone not understand what any of the code in here is doing and need explanation on what it does? Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. that. That's true. So, yeah, so you can make this string, and then you can individually do something like this. But we're just showing that you can have helper functions inside a class, which can be useful too. But that's a great point. You can do that. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah. So the Coco Touch classes are when you want to create a subclass of certain like UI elements. So if you wanted to create another view controller, or in our case, if you wanted to create a table view cell like we will in today's demo, you would use a Coco Touch class. But then for something like a model like this, where we're kind of just defining a kind of object that we could have, so just like your generic class that's not a UI component, you would use a Swift file. OK. Are you guys good on this bit of code right here? OK, we will move on. All right, so if we go to our view controller, we have these constraints here for a table view. But we haven't actually initialized our table view. But first, let's just, yeah, let's do that first. So we're going to create a new table view. And if we want our constraints to actually show up, we have to set this to false. And let's just add it as a sub view to the view and comment out our constraints. And let's run it. OK, so in this simulator, we have this sort of blank table with no cells inside of it, just a bunch of plain white cells. 
So this happens whenever we create a new table view, but we haven't actually added any cells yet, right? So that's what we have to do next. Okay, so now that we have our model, let's actually think about what Yana talked about, about data source and delegate for our table view. So let's set the data source property of our table view. But we get this error and we haven't actually conformed to it yet. So let's create an extension to do that. So down here, I'm going to create an extension, UI table view data source. And there are two methods that we have to implement. So there is self or row at. Oh yeah, if you, so one thing you can do is you can, this error is going to pop up if you haven't implemented anything and it will automatically add the functions you need to implement. So that's very useful in Xcode. So we have cell for row at and we have number of rows in section. So in our case, we're going to display a list of cafeterias. So let's actually create a variable to represent that. It's going to be an array of cafeterias. So assuming that we have that, number of rows in section is just going to be the number of cafeterias we have. So we can actually use the built-in method and use cafeterias.count. So that's saying our table is going to have um, a number of entries equal to the number of cafeterias we have, right? Okay, but we haven't actually created any cafeterias yet, so let's just do some of those. So let's say I have Appel, name Appel, we haven't favorited it yet, so we'll set that to false. Let's say it's moderate, RPCC. Also say that's moderate. Let's go to West Campus. Let's say Becker's good. Okay. And let's actually add these to our cafeterias array. Okay, so now we have our cafeterias array, and we have registered that a bit here with number of rows in section, but now we actually need to create a cell to represent our cafeteria. So this method wants us to return a UI table view cell, but we haven't actually created our custom cell yet. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to create a new file. It's going to be subclass of UI table view cell. And we'll just call it cafeteria table view cell. And then this time it's a Cocoa Touch class because it's a UI component. OK. And we can actually delete these two functions they've automatically added here. And we're going to add an initializer. And we just have to call super init here. It's just boilerplate code. Cool. So if we go back to our simulator, you notice we have two labels, right? One for the name, one for the rating. And then we have this sort of image view, right, for the heart. And in the provided starter code, we actually have this heart right here. So it's just going to be a UI image with that image inside of it. So OK, let's create our variables then. So we're going to have a name label, a rating label, and a heart image view. All right. And it's going to yell at you and say, oh, you need this required initializer, but just fix that. You don't have to worry about what that does. It's just what you have to do. And then let's create our labels. Let's give it a font. And then what's different about cells from other views is that when we add them as subviews, we don't do it to the current view. Um, inside a table view cell, we have this thing called a content view. That's just what you have to add. That's where we add our subviews inside a table view cell. Hmm. 
And we'll do the same for rating label, but with a different font. Okay, and then we're going to create our image view. And an image view actually takes in an image, a UI image in its constructor. And we can do that with the name of our image, which I believe is just heart. Let me double check. Yeah, it's just heart. And let's say we'll do this for the aspect ratio. And then at first, when we haven't actually passed our cafeteria into the cell, the heart shouldn't show up, right? Because we don't know whether or not it's a favorite cafeteria. So we're actually going to set is hidden to true here at first. Okay. Okay, and then let's actually add some constraints. Does anyone still need to see this code? Okay. Give Does anyone time. have any questions about what it's doing? What is a uh, content view again? Oh, so content view. Um, so you know how in a view controller you add subviews to the view property? Yeah. So you just need to use content view inside a UI table view cell. It's just something different that Apple requires. Yeah. Okay. Let's set up our constraints here. And if we go back to the simulator, we want these to be the labels to be aligned to the left, and then we want the image to be aligned to the right. So let's do that. You guys probably love constraints at this point. Leading anchor. Okay. okay, so we're just going to make the leading anchor of the labels be the leading anchor of the content view with a little bit of padding. So I'm actually going to create some variables for spacing inside the cell. That's really helpful. So let's just say we want eight pixels of padding everywhere. And then let's say we want the height of the labels to be something like 16. And let's say, let's say we want the length of our image just to be 20. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to add some padding here. Faster. Let's see. Okay. Also, another tip when you're creating constraints, anytime you want uh, views to depend on each other, like in this case in the simulator, we have these two labels have the same leading anchor. We actually want to constrain rating label to the leading anchor of the name label just to make it easier for them to depend on each other. So, in this case, it's going to be name label. Okay, we want the rating label to be on the bottom of the name label. Yeah, so if you think about a view, like the view controller, you the reason why we use the safe layout area guide is because views have, or specifically on the newer iPhones, they have that notch blocking the top and like the little bar blocking the bottom. So we have to use safe, la safe area layout to make sure we're going below the, that bar. But for the case of a UI table view cell, it's just a cell inside a table view. So there's no notion of like the top area being blocked. So you can just constrain it to the content views top and bottom anchor. 
Okay, almost done with these constraints. It takes a while to type them out. Okay, and let's center it. Okay. Does anyone need more time for these constraints? Okay. Oh, what is this one saying? Oh yeah, we need a comma here. Okay, so now that we've actually set up our cell, we still need to actually put an individual cafeteria inside the cell, right? So the way we can do that is we need to add a method here that we're going to call configure. We're going to configure our cell with a cafeteria. So let's actually add this method. And we have a name label, but we haven't actually added text to it yet. So we want the text of the name label to be the cafeteria's name. And we want the rating label to use that helper method that we added inside our cafeteria class. OK. All right, so now, does anyone have any questions about what I just did? Does anyone still need to see what I typed? OK. Um, so now we actually need to create the cells inside this special method here called cell for row at. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use our table view to, like Yana was talking about earlier, dequeue a reusable cell. So it has a built-in method that takes in an identifier, right? And an index path. And we're going to force cast this as the type that we just created, cafeteria table view cell. And you'll see why we need to do that. Um, and we're going to grab our cafeteria. And the way we do that is we can use index path row. This will help us index into our table view. And that'll give us a cafeteria. And now we can actually configure our cell. That's why we needed to force cast this as cafeteria table view cell, because now we can actually use that configure method. OK. And now we just need to return the cell. But first, I'm going to make selection style none, because sometimes, by default, if you tap on the cell, it'll just show this gray background. We don't want to do that. OK, can anyone tell me what's missing? Do you guys think the cells will show up if I run the simulator? So the answer is actually no. So I still need to actually register my cell. And the way I can do that is I give the cell name dot self, and I pass in this reuse identifier, which I created up here, right? And that's how we actually register the cell. OK, so now, so now we have a data source for our table view. And, but we also need to specify the delegate, right? So let's set it to this view controller. And we need to create one more extension. OK. So we need to actually give our table view a cell height. So we actually defined a constant up here called cell height. So we're just going to return that 50 pixels. Cool. And let's just do that for now. So let's run the simulator. OK. So nothing showed up. Let me double check what went wrong. Let's see here. Hmm. That is strange. Oh, okay. Wait, so. 
Hmm. No, it's not. Oh yeah, that's probably what it is. Cafeterias dot count. <clears throat> hmm. One second, guys. Let's see. This one, right? It's yeah. Showing up. That's weird. Hold on, I'm just gonna check one thing real quick. If there's a tiny thing I might have forgotten. Do you guys have any questions in the meantime? Yeah. You want to show? Wait, I think they were down there. These right here? Yeah. We can't fit all of them at once, but... <laughs> Wait, hold on. Constraints are okay. Constraints are fine, right? Yeah. Can uh, you go back to oh, your control? Oh, maybe I didn't do setup constraints. I know why. Oh. Okay, so the problem was I actually didn't call setup constraints inside the cell. So everything's fine, just didn't call that. Um, let's run it one more time. <laughs> okay, so now we actually have our cafeterias. So in the completed simulator, you'll notice that if I click on one of the cells, these hearts show up, right? But if we do that here, nothing actually happens. So the way we're going to do that is we actually have to add another method inside our UI table view delegate. We're going to call it, and this is uh, did select row at. So it's sort of similar to cell for row at. We actually need to use the index path to access our cell. So the way we can do that is let's grab, let's first grab our cafeteria. And now we can grab our cell using this method cell for row at. And it just takes in an index path. And again, we're going to force cast this as cafeteria table view cell. Cool. So what we want to actually do is make the heart show up. But the first thing we need to do is actually change something about our model, right? Because we have this property called is favorite. So let's actually change that first. Oh, not cell. Cafeteria. That is favorite. And then there's actually this method called toggle. So we can just toggle this property here. So if it's true, it'll be set to false and then vice versa. And that won't do anything though. We actually have to do something inside our cell to make the heart show up. So let's add a helper method here called toggle heart. And it's going to take in a boolean is favorite. Do you guys understand the logic that I just used here? Does that make sense? Cool. So pretty much, um, if it is our favorite cafeteria, then we want to show the heart, right? We want to set is hidden to false. And then if, we, if it's not our favorite cafeteria, then it should be true. It should be hidden. So let's actually, inside this method, call toggle heart. It'll recognize it in a second. I need to save it, I think, inside the editor. OK. So now if I rerun the simulator, it's taking a bit of time, let's see, let me try it again. Okay, so if I tap on the cell now, the heart shows up. 
If I tap on it again, it goes away. And I can do this any number of times. So that's just one method that you can implement for a table view. There's another one that you can do called did deselect row at. We won't implement that here, but there are all sorts of methods you can implement for table views, um, depending on different user interactions. There's a lot of functionality here, so it's pretty cool. Uh, does anyone still need to see the code that I typed in a different file or in this one? OK, cool. Um, yeah, that's it for the demo. But yeah, table views are really good for displaying large amounts of data, and they're going to be super useful for the rest of the course. Does anyone have any like general questions about table views or the cells that's not really code specific? Yeah. Okay. All right. So just before we end, we have some action items. Um, project four, which we'll deal with table views, is going to be released tonight and will be due next Sunday at eleven fifty nine PM as always. Um, and if you need an extension, please remember to request them at least 24 hours in advance. We're pretty like lenient with granting extensions as long as they're, they're requested 24 hours in advance. And then for the submissions for Project 2, we noticed that a lot of them had like missing files or just missed some component to be able to run. So please remember to zip your projects correctly or else we actually can't open them or grade them. So if you did run into this when you see your grades come out, um, for this project, you guys can come to office hours and kind of show us your code or 